Good morning, everyone. On behalf of IHA, I would like to thank you for attending today's webinar on Simplify Your Open Innovation Initiative in 2013 with Bob Rathbit of Invention Home. Invention Home is a partner with IHA in the invention and innovation world. Bob? Good morning, everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar. Uh, I'm going to jump right into the webinar and wanted to introduce myself. I am Bob Raspit with Invention Home. I'm going to be the one that's presenting today's webinar. Uh, I want to start out by thanking Ginny, Perry, Debbie, everyone at the IHA for allowing us to host the webinar and for giving us the opportunity to meet with all of you today. And I thank you all for attending. Before I begin, uh, what I want to do is simply lay out a brief agenda so that you all know what to expect over the next 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, it is going to be a closed uh, format webinar. However, the folks at IHA are going to be taking any questions you may have. I'm going to spend about 30 minutes uh, educating and giving you some statistics on open innovation. I'm going to leave about uh, 10 to 15 minutes towards the back end where I'm actually going to show you some live examples of companies, uh, what they're doing and how they're uh, creating their own open innovation programs. And then at the end, I'm going to leave about a 10 to 15 minute window uh, in an open QA session. We'll turn that on and allow anybody to ask any questions that they may have. So uh, with that said, I'm going to jump right into the key objectives of today's webinar. So let's begin. Companies today, uh, both large and small, are all recognizing more than ever the need to look outside of their own organizations in order to find innovation opportunities in order to stay ahead of their competition. It, it's our goal as an innovation company to get to you and to get you to see how open innovation can make your company more profitable. So in this webinar, we certainly want to discuss three key topics. The first is to show how companies are managing open innovation. The second is to discuss ways to drive product opportunities to your company. And last but not least, we also want to show, once you've done that, how to filter product opportunities faster and get to that uh, innovative uh, licensing deal and get that, that winning product in your hands as fast as possible. So when it comes to innovation, we want to take you basically from the starting line right to the finish line as quickly as we possibly can. So today we're going to define and educate you on open innovation. And again, as I mentioned, we're going to show you some live examples and give you some tips towards the end on how we can achieve uh, these three objectives. So first and foremost, in talking and speaking on open innovation, we want to certainly define open innovation. Uh, in recent years, why open innovation is so important these days is that more companies are shifting towards what is commonly referred to as open innovation, or as I sometimes mentioned, um, it is OI. Companies are actually creating now open innovation programs. Companies are shifting their resources. Companies are hiring and creating OI teams to manage this process. They realize what's out there. We want to get you folks to realize how big this opportunity is for you. Uh, to give you one example, we had a CEO of a $5 billion company uh, recently came to me and basically said they just put in their five-year plan and they shifted their revenue where now they want 15 to 20 percent of their company's total revenue to come from new products. So when you stop and think about that, 15 to 20 percent of their entire revenue to come from new products, how are you going to achieve that? So think about that, and, and, and what I wanted to make sure you're aware is that is what a lot of your competition is doing today. So they're shifting their resources, realizing how big open innovation is. So one thing I want you to keep in mind throughout the entire presentation and ask yourself, are you tapping into this multi-billion dollar innovation industry? And if not, why not? If you are, how are you tapping into it? Do you have the right processes in place? You all compete for your consumers, and whether you realize it or not, you're actually all in a contest for the com and, and with your competitors for user, what I like to call user innovators. You're competing for their interest and attention. Take, for example, some companies like a GE, uh, a Procter & Gamble. These companies over the decades have all become known for innovation. So inventors and innovators are actually flocking to those companies to bring the latest and greatest ideas, product improvements, and inventions. So, uh, are you one of the companies that's known for innovation? Are you known for innovation, and what are you doing to capture that innovation? So if you're not known for innovation, 
We'll give you some tips, and we're going to show you towards the back end of the presentation how to drive inventors your way. We'll also share some ideas and give you some suggestions on what tools are available to you or how you may be able to expand upon your current processes. All right, so open innovation, let's first define it. Uh, simply put, OI is a willingness to look outside your own organization for new ideas and paths to market. That's it. Pretty simple. Simply put, uh, basically it means firms are looking to advance their own technology and advance technology by beginning to look outside of their internal processes um, with and, and expand their technology by innovating with partners. So those partners could come in various forms, and we'll touch on that in a moment. Is open innovation worthwhile. We're going to educate you on open innovation, um, and hopefully you'll see why companies now more than ever are focusing resources in this direction, and why we feel you should also be focusing your resources in this direction now and in the near future. I have some industry statistics I'm going to show in a minute, along with some facts from some recent uh, MIT Sloan studies that I also believe you'll find enlightening, and hopefully we'll show you why open innovation is a worthwhile endeavor, endeavor on your part. So one of the questions that companies always ask is, how do I stay ahead of my competition? Crucial question, how do I stay ahead of the competition? One of the ways we're going to discuss, and just one of the many ways, but what we're going to focus on today is to innovate. So the answer to the question of how do I stay ahead of my competition is to innovate. One way to stay ahead of the competition is you as a company create products or services. In the case of many or most of the houseware companies, it's consumer goods. So some questions to ask yourself, how many products is your company introducing this year, next year, and in the near future? And how many, how many products do you think your competition is in introducing in that same time period? Are you coming up with those products through your own internal processes? Or are you also looking outside the box and outside of your own internal process for ideas all over the world? How many times have you seen another company introduce a product to market and say, why can't we bring out products like that, or why didn't we think of that idea? How did they grab that idea? How did they bring that product to market and we did not? I had another company recently come to you, just to give you an example, and tell me that their goal was to bring 32 new products. Their head of R&D had to bring 32 new products to their CEO to license and market within the next year. They had no idea how they were going to do this internally. They, they weren't anywhere near developing 32 products, so they quickly realized they had to look outside their own internal process. They had to expand, and they had to think a little larger than just their own internal teams that they had in place. Now, I mentioned companies like Procter & Gamble, and I also mentioned GE. If you think of GE, what is their slogan? The answer is, we bring good things to life. You hear that all the time, and you've probably heard that over the decades. Their slogan screams innovation. They are now looking outside their own internal processes, and they've also embraced the open innovation concept. So when we speak about innovation, what I want to do is basically break down innovation into two parts and split this into two categories. You have internal innovation and external innovation. First, we're going to touch on internal in in innovation. And what that means is that you basically, as a company, have your own closed team developing products. It's assumed that companies produce products for consumers, that consumers are passive, they buy and they consume what your company is creating. Today, rather than seeing consumers as simply just the market and the consumers of products, leaders of multiple industries and all the industries that we deal with, not just specific to the houseware industries, we're seeing that they, those leaders are seeing those consumers now as the source and one of the, uh, an, an added source for innovation. So this is also part of the shift in the trend that I discussed where more companies are shifting their resources and looking towards open innovation programs. Here's another company and, and many leaders that are also looking at uh, innovators or excuse me consumers as a source for innovation. So if you're an internal innovation only company, one question you want to, might, might want to ask yourself is why are you limiting yourself? Why are you closing yourself off to all those products and all those product ideas that could be outside and coming to you from outside your own organization? There are licensing deals being made all the time from independent inventors, and some of the greatest products throughout history have all been invented by independent inventors, not just multi-billion dollar multinational corporations and companies. So now that we touched on internal innovation, let's look at external innovation. 
external innovation which is exactly what we refer to and what we're talking about when we speak of in open innovation. The two terms can go hand in hand. Basically, external is looking outside of your own resources for new product ideas and inventions. So if you're thinking yourself and asking yourself, why would you even want to look outside your own internal processes, or you're thinking, hey, we're fantastic, we're great, we bring out great products, why would I want to even look outside of what we're doing internally? What did you see everywhere at the house, houseware show? The answer to that question is innovation. So inventors are coming to the show. We have inventors, independent inventors, folks that are, are just have a ton of innovation that are coming to the show to present to everyone. If you had a chance to reach out to the inventors corner that we sponsored, you will see companies coming and flocking to that area looking for the newest, latest, greatest ideas. So these inventors are coming to the show to present to all the companies that are there, the thousands of companies that attended. So what if and why aren't they coming straight to you? So these, these innovators and these inventors are, are basically standing there, waving their arms, yelling, look at my invention. Somebody come license it, take it off my hands, let's make money with this. They're out there everywhere. So another example I want to show to you, I want to talk to you about uh, concerning open, uh, external innovation and why you should be looking outside the box, um, the box at the pet show, at the recent pet show, not just the houseware show. I spoke with a gentleman that actually used to work in the toy industry. So here's a gentleman that has been through a couple different industries. He mentioned to me when he was working in the toy industry, he actually passed on the Cabbage Patch doll idea. Now think about that. He passed on one of the, the greatest uh, toy products in history, but he at least got to see the item. An inventor, a, a person that invented that item, created that item, actually brought that to them. So how many companies didn't even get the chance to see one of the greatest products in history, or one of the greatest toy products in history? So think about that. There's products that are coming to companies, and, and some folks are getting a shot at that. Um, if you're not open to open innovation, you're not even getting a shot at those products to, to even have a shot at, at a licensing deal with those, those innovative products that are out there. How many people would have killed just to see that item? So we see it every day. We see companies looking for items they want, want to create a, a, an open innovation product, but they don't do really, they really don't do anything or very little to bring and make themselves inviting to inventors. So basically, if you're still wondering why you should pursue looking innovation and need some more convincing, let me just show you a few statistics here. I'm just going to take a minute. We're not going to bore you with a lot of statistics, but we do want to show you a few facts that hopefully will open your eyes as to, to what we're looking at when we speak uh, about open innovation is, and is it worthwhile to your company or your corporation. So if you look at the slide, is open innovation worthwhile? Just to throw a few statistics your way, if you Google search open innovation, you're going to find that there are 9 million hits per month. That's a huge number. So somebody obviously out there is looking at open innovation. Companies, uh, innovators, uh, folks coming up with inv inventions, corporations, people are searching this. Nine million hits per month uh, are sur surrounding open innovation. Universities have reported, and, and this goes back to a 2011 study, $1.8 billion earned on invention. So universities alone, with their incubators and their uh, R&D programs that they have. Universities just by themselves are coming up with close to $2 billion a year earned on inventions. That's a huge number to tap into. The United States Patent and Trademark Office filings uh, mentioned, and when they list um, on their site, they have shown that in 2011 there were 530,000 patents filed. Again, over half a million patents filed for new products. So. What does this show and what do these numbers show? It shows that there's a huge market opportunity out there that if you're only in, um, internal, um, an, an internal innovation company and not an external innovation uh, and an open, open to the concept of open innovation, you're missing out on all of these over half a million patents that are being filed and $2 billion just that the universities report, let alone all the other uh, dollars that are out there. There's a huge spend. Uh, and we're going to touch base with the MIT Sloan uh, study on some numbers in a moment. So open innovation, what does OI mean to your company? Now that we've educated you a little bit on open innovation, what it is, um, thrown out some industry statistics, ask yourself, are you really open? Are you committed to open innovation? And are you ready to start? So if you're there, great. If you're not, I'm going to throw out and give you a few more um, 
give you some numbers and some statistics from the MIT Sloan study. And as I mentioned, there was a shift on how, on how companies are placing more revenue towards open innovations. One of the reasons that I mentioned were consumers, possibly some of your own customers, are solving their own problems and are more than ever creating new products and new product improvements. So let me give you an example, and I'm going to give you a few statistics to back this up. In addition to the industry statistics I just showed, the MIT Sloan conducted a study, and their numbers quantify what's at stake. So basically, they researched the UK, the US, and Japan. They looked at the total, and they found that as a percentage of total R&D expenditures, meaning out of all the money spent on R&D in each of those countries, consumer spend, which is what consumers themselves are spending on R&D versus what companies are spending on R&D, show that in the UK, 144% of all research and development expenditures consumer spend. So that means that consumers were actually spending more than UK companies on research and development. In the US, it was 33% of R&D, of all R&D expenditures. So that's a huge percentage of dollars being spent on innovation by consumers, not by companies, not by consumers, not by multinationals. And in Japan, it was 13% of all consumer spend. So basically what those numbers mean and if you just look at the U.S., again, 33% of the entire country's R&D expenditures was by consumers. Basically, that means that consumers are now getting into the game of inventing. So if I asked you just in general, let's take a step back and, and just show what this means. Is There's a shift and there's this trend towards consumers versus companies inventing products. If I asked you what company invented the dishwasher, your minds are probably going to immediately start thinking, what major appliance company invented the dishwasher? Was it Maytag? Was it Whirlpool? Et cetera, et cetera. You immediately start to think of corporations and companies. Ask anyone that question. They're going to start, they immediately are going to go to a company. In fact, and here's just a little fun fact for you, the dishwasher was actually invented in 1886 by Josephine Cochran when she found that servers, her servers that she had, washing her fine china were chipping her fine china when they were washing it by hand. So she had to come up with her own, con own solution to her problem, and thus she invented the dishwasher. So it wasn't a major uh, multi-billion dollar company at the time. It was actually a, a, a consumer that came up and created and solved her own problems. So these inventions are out there all the time. You just have to figure out how are you grasping those innovations and how are you bringing those inventors to you. So. Um, we talked about what OI um, should mean to your company. What it means to us, and, and actually when I put this slide together, what I mean is what does it mean to all of us? It represents another strategy for driving profitability. There's profitable new inventions being created out there all the time. You just need to figure out how to capture that. Also what it means to us is, by, is driving revenue through newer and product, pr um, products and services and also driving cost savings through innovation and efficiency improvements. So there's product improvements out there that are being invented. Consumers are solving their own problems and inventing their own items to basically make better the products that are already existing. So next slide, and the next, I'm going to shift gears a little bit. Now that hopefully we have you open uh, to the to the concept of open innovation, we certainly want to take a, a look at some of the common problems with open innovation. So we're going to split this into two categories. One, we're going to look at the problems for innovators. Then we're going to touch base on the problems for companies. So think of yourself as an inventor, as an innovator. One of the co common problems, there's actually two common problems. One is navigating the patent and invention process. Uh, this could be extremely tedious. The legalities involved could be tedious, and a lot of folks have great product, great um, ideas, inventions, and product improvements, but they have no idea how to bring that product to market, what's involved, and what they need to do to, to protect the item and protect their, themselves. Number two is identifying and managing the commercial, commercialization opportunities. So inventors have great products out there. Uh, the next um, big, winning, profitable item is sitting out there. They have problems figuring out how to bring that to market as well. So for companies, some of the problems are basically finding innovation opportunities, and number two, managing innovator submissions. So finding innovation and managing innovation are two of the biggest, and those are very wide, broad categories, but those are two of the biggest problems for companies. So you have innovators with issues and problems, and you have companies that have problems. One of the goals we want to do is try to bring those two together. 
So what sources are available to you? What sources are available? There are, we're not the only game in town, obviously, and we just want to touch base on, um, there's many sources out there. Some of the larger ones are, number one, that you can share technology or partner with other companies. Uh, you can also invest in startups. And as I mentioned earlier, universities have their own incubators and their R&D programs. A lot of companies will reach out to universities and, and studies and what have you, and their R&D problems, or excuse me, programs. But one of the sources that we're going to focus on is licensing or acquiring of intellectual property. Um, so that is a huge topic, and that's where we jump in and we get involved as a company. And we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about that as well. So uh, more companies would probably pursue um, open innovation if licensing um, independent inventions wasn't perceived to be as so difficult and if companies had the proper tools. So simply saying that you're open to looking at ideas or, hey, do you have a, a, a great idea here, mail it to Marge in human resources really isn't a process. Or if you consider that a process, let's just say it's probably not the most effective process. So you really need to open the door and make inventors comfortable. So, so there's a few ways by licensing or acquiring intellectual products, either of consumers or businesses. Um, you can actually go with other consumers or businesses and, and look at their uh, products that they're bringing out and buy them or license or acquire uh, from other consumers or businesses. You can buy innovation by paying a royalty. Our goal and what we want to do as a company, we want to bring innovators and companies together. So we want to take those um, innovative products and inventions and inventors and bring those to you, the company. Likewise, we want to get those companies, you, the company, open to taking a look at all the inventions and innovators that are out there. So finding innovation, licensing or acquiring intellectual products and finding that innovation. There's a couple ways that you can do that. One, you can search the market. We just had the IHA show, which was fantastic. Uh, you can attend industry events and conferences. You can attend or exhibit in industry trade shows. How do you drive innovators to you? There's many ways. You can advertise. Uh, advertise and let folks know that you're looking for, you're very open to looking for new ideas, new inventions. Um, you can reach out to social media, which is huge these days. You can sponsor industry events um, like the IHA. You can attend and, and sponsor those events. You can tap into networks and innovation groups. And then last but not least, um, I'm going to touch base on our company and how we fit into the mix uh, in Invention Home. We certainly want to help drive innovators your way as well. So, so basically, if you're closed, you're spending dollars on your internal teams that you have. You're spending dollars on that process that you have. So if you're internal and closed open innovation, you have the, the process, your teams, your salaries, your people that you're, you're paying to come up with products and product improvements. If you're closed, you're only looking at a small piece of the pie and a small part that's what's out there. So you're missing out on open innovation. There's products out there and companies that produce consumer goods actually have a front line of innovation to serve as your feedstock to commercial innovation processes. If there's an inventor with a great product sitting there and you open your doors to invite him in, he's basically delivering that idea right to your doorstep at practically no cost to you. So with that said, take a look at your processes now and ask yourself, are they inventor friendly? Are you making inventors uh, want to bring that product to you versus your comp competition? And how easy are you making it on that inventor? So managing innovation. So now that you have the in innovation flowing in and coming into your company, there's a few things that you want to do. And this goes back to the original bullet points we're starting to get into, where you want to figure out how to manage that innovation. That could be a struggle for a lot of companies. So one, you want to create a centralized process for submitting to you. You want to create a submission form on your website. Give that inventor, give those folks a place to submit their invention. You want to make it very easy to find your forms and processes to submit to get those folks to you as quickly as possible. You want to build a system for accessing and managing submission. This refers back to where I mentioned the shift early on where companies are now creating open innovation programs. They're, they're building their own systems or they're looking for systems that are already available to them. You can provide timely responses to innovators, which is crucial. You want to keep that PR, and you want to be very inventor friendly, as I mentioned. And then you also want to develop an internal review and evaluation process. So you know, 
Is your innovation flowing in one direction, or do you have it scattered within your organization? Have you given the inventor a place to go? Have you made it clear what you're looking for? Are you, are you getting yourself out of the weeds? It doesn't really help if you have a submission and you can't find it later and you're having difficulty managing that. Um, is your system friendly? Is your process friendly? And does it keep you from getting multiple emails, phone calls, mail, faxes, etc.? And do you have a committee? Do you have a team that meets regularly? How are you sharing your ideas internally? So a lot of it comes down to time management. How much time are you spending simply managing this process? So now let's get to who we are. Um, as I mentioned, I work with Invention Home. What Invention Home is, is we're an innovation company. So our vision is to connect innovators anywhere in the world with companies across the United States. We have this huge bucket of inventor, inventors and innovators, and, in, and basically a huge innovation bucket, if we will. We want to get that into companies' hands as quickly as possible and as, as easily and as efficient as possible. The goal is to create a universally acceptable platform for sharing that innovation because we believe the company should have the ability to tap into a system that connects you, the company, with the innovators anywhere in the world. We basically want to get the right products to the right companies. We want to get the right innovators to the right people looking for that innovation. So what I also want to mention and what I want to talk about um, is that we in the invention um, in the innovation uh, industry, we're very reputable. We have an A rating with the BBB, which is extremely difficult to obtain in the invention community. We work with multiple industries, not just the IHA. On the inventor side, we help inventors patent, design, and market their products in order to obtain licensing agreements. So we want to get those folks up to a licensable stage that we can then get that, those products to you as quickly as possible, again, to help you get out of the weeds, if you will, and get to that licensing deal as quickly as, as possible. So what I want to also touch base on is how we work hand in hand with the IHA. We work with the IHA for eight years. Um, we've had a great relationship and we certainly thank Ginny and Perry and everyone at the IHA um, for what they've done with us and, and, and to create that, that great working, that great synergy that we have. Um, what we've done, and just to show on the slide, if you look, a few things I wanted to point out with the IHA and having the privilege to work with these folks for so long, we've actually, through the years, provided content to their newsletter with features invention, featured inventions. So if you look in the upper right hand, or excuse me, upper left hand corner, this is one way that we work with the IHA and try to get those features inventions out to the to the uh, houseworkers community. Moving uh, clockwise, we also assist and provide content for the IHA Inventor Education Program. We're also uh, down in the bottom right corner. We're a VIP sponsor of their Inventor Corners at the Houseware Show. Every year there's constant traffic in that area, and people absolutely, we know more than anything, people love to see new things. So we want to certainly assist with that and help drive that to the show as well. We also work with the IHA to allow companies to search for products on the IHA website. So these are just some of the features that we provide and how we work hand-in-hand -hand with the IHA. So. Now that we've discussed open innovation, defined it, educated you, um, have given some statistics to show how big open innovation is and how much innovation there is out there and how profitable that can be for your company, uh, we've touched on some of the, the problems uh, with both innovators and companies in trying to get that together, get you to see the right products and get the right products into your hand. We certainly want to be able to uh, not only work with associations and trade shows and, and, and folks like the IHA, but we also work with companies such as yourself in order to drive that innovation your way. So some of the solutions that we want to talk about, um, now that we're getting out of the education portion of the webinar, we want to show a couple live examples of companies today and how they're managing their innovation programs. We're going to give you a few live examples to show a couple industry leaders, uh, which I'm sure you're, you're familiar with. Um, and we're going to show you what they're actually doing and, and show some live examples of how they're managing their innovation, what they've done to create their own innovation programs, if you will. Then we're also going to take a few minutes and show you some of the tools that we have available and show you how to use those and what's available to you. Um, we have a lot of no-cost systems and tools out there that are available uh, that don't cost a penny uh, for companies. And we want to also let you know what's out there, what other companies are doing, and what we have available to help you out as well. So 
what I'm going to do is exit out of the, the slideshow, and I'm going to go right into a couple examples. What we've done at Invention Home is we've created a system that we call Submit My Invention, the SMI system. Basically, what this is, you're now looking at you're now looking at the website for SMI. And what this is is basically a system that allows you. Uh, there's a front end to the system, and there's a back end to the system. I'm going to show you a few live examples of the front end of the system first to show you how companies like Crown Bold or a company like QVC is actually using their um, our systems and show you how they've created their own open innovation programs, if you will, to make it easier to manage, to, to open themselves to innovation and manage that process. So first and foremost, what I want to show you is the front end of the SMI system. If you go to Crown Bolt, I'm using Crown Bolt as just one of the many companies um, that are open to open innovation, embracing innovation, and have really taken the first steps to opening their doors to, to bring and rein that innovation in. If you look at Crown Bolt and you go right to their web page, one of the things that stands out immediately is they actually have right on the front of their web page an innovators and inventors area. So if you're an invention, inventor, and you're an innovator and you have products that you want to bring to Crown Bolt, you know exactly where to go. There's no question. Here's innovators and inventors. You click there, and what that does is that immediately brings you to a little splash page that Crown Bolt threw together, innovators and inventors. So one, they've made it very easy and they've opened their door to inventors to bring their products to them. They're basically saying, we're Crown Bolt. Do you have the next big thing? Let's talk. Now we're inviting inquiries from creative, talented innovators. And basically, if you have an idea, click here to submit. So an in inventor or anybody with a new product idea or product improvement can easily submit to Crown Bolt. They've made it very easy, they've made it very friendly, and they make themselves very open to bring that innovation their way. So when you click on the, um, the submission form, this is now basically our system that Crown Bolt has for their new product invention submissions. So what they've also done is made it very easy for the inventor to say, we are seeking new product invention submissions in the following categories. So they, they come right out and tell you exactly what they're looking for. They have their terms and agreements. So you as an inventor now have a three-step, very easy process to submit your invention to Crown Bolt. So once you click that you've, concern, that you've confirmed that you see what they're looking for, you agree with their terms, um, you basically go to the second step, which is your personal information. So the inventor fills out all their contact information and how they, uh, the company can reach back out to the inventor. And the third step, which I'll show you in a minute, is the actual product information page. So Crown Bolt has a third step process where you, the inventor can go in, fill out all of their product information, and what that does is Crown Bolt's customize that to, to basically say, we want to see all this information, boom, 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 they have it all bullet pointed and outlined, and I'll show you that in a minute, to basically say we need this basic information first to, to evaluate and take a look at that product before we even move further. So what they've done is they've kind of gotten them out of the weeds, so they're not receiving phone calls, 40-page emails, faxes, packets of mail on these inventions, and spend a ton of time, and after spending that ton of time, may not even have a clue as to what that inventor is talking about. So they make it very easy, and they rein those inventors in. Another example, what I want to show, a company you're probably all familiar with, is QVC. QVC has their Sprouts program, qvcsprouts.com. So if you go to qvcsprouts.com, what you'll find is, you know, in QVC, look at, the, look at all the products that QVC brings out in a year. How do they get that? They look for open innovation. They look outside the box, and they look to bring inventors and inventions and new product ideas to them. So basically, when you go to qvcsprouts.com, you have submit your product to QVC Sprouts. They have their submission criteria, and again, you click to submit your product, which brings you to the qvcsprouts.com invention product, new product or invention submission form. So that's basically the front end of our system. And wanted to show you that, because again, those companies basically make it easy for inventors to come in. They tell them what they're looking for. They give them a process to follow, and basically start funneling those inventions and those products to them in a nice, neat, formatted fashion. So the second part of the system 
is once you now have that in, in, and you've given that direction for inventors to get that product into your hand, basically now you have a back-end system to manage that. So this is the back-end system, part of the Submit My Invention system that you now have in every, this is available to every company out there. There's no cost to using this system. Um, and at the end, I'll leave the Q&A open, and if anybody wants to reach out to me uh, for more information, by all means, you can call me or email me at any time. But this is the back end of the system. So now that, that, now that you have inventors coming to you and innovation flowing, the second part, and if you, if you remember earlier when I mentioned some of the problems with open innovation is managing it, well, now we give you one centralized location that we as a company can forward product ideas your way, Independent inventors can click on your website and submit to you. One way or another, you have one centralized location now to collect all of your innovation. If you have R&D folks going, taking trips to China, they can submit. Companies, innovators, sales reps, consumers, anybody can submit to your website. Click on your website, submit a product, bring that to you, and now it's all captured in one centralized location. So this is the back end system you would log into a specific account set up specifically for your company and you'll basically see a new review accepted and declined folder. So you have four folders to manage your innovations and all your products. So just as an example, um, and that, this is just a kind of a demo account if you will, I just pulled this up so you can see what it looks like and what you would have. So as inventors submit to you, you basically have a new file which all your inventions are dumped into. There's also autoresponders that go back out to the inventors to let them know that their product was received by you, just to let them know that it was successfully received. So you now can take your time at any given time, and you can go on and sort by date, image, name and description, patent status, development stage, source, rank and item, and you can review and decline. So right here, you can now, what might take hours or days, now can take literally minutes where you can go through all of your products and say Magic Spice or Cantaloupe Peel or Butterfly Knife. Decline, decline. You know what? This Butterfly Knife looks pretty good. Let's review that. So you can basically filter all of your products. You can click on any individual product you like. And this is the form, if you remember, in the front end of the system when I brought up the QVC and Crown Bolt examples, that third page of that, that third step of the submission process, you now can basically click on each individual invention or new product idea, and you have all of your information collected in one page. Patent status, utility filed if so, other protection, development stage, uh, video links if there's a video, YouTube video, photos, product description, product invention description, selling benefits and features, all this is available to you. You can print the submission out, you can share that internally, you can actually bring the system into a committee if you'd like to review. Um, some companies actually bring this right into their boardroom every 30 days, pull up this system. Everything is now collected in one nice, neat fashion for you. You can review, accept, or decline products. So again, you can manage your systems Again, there's autoresponders that go out, and there's a lot of bells and whistles to the system that takes maybe what previously may have taken um, oh, quite some time for you to manage or dig through your emails to find you know, 40 page emails or what have you. Now it's all collected in one centralized location for you. So this is just one tool that we have available. Once companies are up and running with the SMI, that opens the door and allows us to do um, many things with companies. To give you another example of another feature that we offer, um, Invention Home offers uh, product hunts. So Crown Bolt, and here's an example we did once Crown Bolt um, had their system up and running. Now we can put out to, be it social media, be it our website, we can actually go out into the invention community and let folks know, hey, Crown Bolt is seeking hardware inventions. Here's the categories they're looking for. What ideas do you have? So now we are reaching out for you. And, and the reason the system is important is because now we can have those folks click to their website, click on their link, and easily submit that to Crown Bolt. So again, you know, there's multiple things that we can do. Um, you may be a company that's receiving, currently receiving our hot link emails. Um, we certainly email companies with new innovation, new product ideas, product improvements, and inventions. Again, the SMI system is kind of a step up, a little more modern way, a little more automated way, a faster, easier, better way to manage that. So hopefully um, you see the, the merits of the system. 
Um, lots of companies are. This is quickly becoming uh, the industry standard in a lot of industries. So we wanted to bring that up to you to your attention. And for the most part, hopefully we provide those solutions to you and make that process for capturing that innovation much simpler, um, give you a centralized location, and help you folks manage that and get you quicker, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, get you from that starting line to the finish line, get you from looking for innovation to get to you to that licensing deal as quickly as, as, as fast as, po as possible and as fast as we can. So with that said, that pretty much concludes today's webinar. So I hope, hopefully, we've educated you on open innovation. Hopefully, we've provided you with some statistics to show you why you should be capturing that open in, that innovation that's out there, opening your doors. Hopefully, we've provided some solutions to make it much easier for you to find that next new product um, and drive more profits your way. And just remember that just because the light bulb, the automobile, and the computer have already been invented, that there aren't any great ideas left. There's plenty of great new product ideas out there. How are you going to find them? So with that said, I'm going to open it up and allow for a brief Q&A session. And the folks at IHA can turn, this on, turn it on and, and open up uh, the, the webinar. Um, I'll certainly answer any questions and answers you may have. And if you'd like to learn more or, or dig into a little further into our submission uh, management system, you can feel free to call me or email me at any time. Um, our door is always open. Uh, and, and I'd love to have an open conversation specifically as every company is um, very unique and has certain needs. Um, would love to discuss further. So I have my contact information and if anybody has any questions uh, or again would like to take a look at some of the systems we have available to you to help you manage open innovation, feel free to reach out to me at any time. So with that, so I want to say thank you. The only question we have is what is the cost sure. to use the system? It's a great question. There's absolutely no cost to you. There's no um, contracts you need to sign. The system is out there and designed um, as, an, as an innovation company. We want to create a larger web, if you will, to get the right product into the right company's hand. So there's no cost to you uh, to use the system. And again, if anybody wants to dig into the system further, by all means, you can call me, email me, or again, we have uh, about another 10 or 15 minutes. I can certainly take any more questions that you may have. Um, currently, there are no questions at this time. Okay. All right, and yeah, and it's a great question. A lot of folks um, do pay quite a bit for systems that are out there. Um, again, no cost to use the system. Companies are using it. Um, we have companies coming to us constantly, um, hearing it from other companies, looking for open innovation systems. Again, we can certainly help. Um, if you're interested, call me at any time. Bob, thank you so much, and Invention Home. This is a, a great presentation. And for those of you, who, uh, for all attendees, and would like to spread the word, it is um, on Housewares, uh, www.housewares.org in our Knowledge Center. And feel free to visit our website or contact Bob directly. This is a, a great submission program, and it was utilized uh, recently at the last International Home and House Center show. So once again, thank you, Bob, and Invention Home. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks.